Good morning, folks. We've got a few key science stories to hit today. We'll peek in on the sun and Earth as well as we start with the last 24 hours on our star at spaceweathernews.com. We're going to find the last day has had the incoming active region top left pretty much stealing attention. Smaller active region on the south facing Earth is simple and not flaring. The coronal hole top left out ahead of the active region won't face Earth for another two days. And even the X-ray flux is beginning to jitter as this one comes into view expecting to see the first surface features of sunspots later tonight. Quickly looking at the solar wind next, where plasma speed remains elevated, but the density and underlying pressure and power of the stream is diminished, along with the geomagnetic instability. Quick peek in on Douglas here. The situation is still ongoing at Hawaii this morning, as the last island takes its turn with the beast above. Let's stick with the weather for a moment. They are discovering that the model they have been using to gauge effects of weather modification aren't exactly correct. They want to reconsider how the physics would play out, and my vote is for them to completely redo their plan and then throw it in the trash and stop trying to play God in the sky, go geoengineer a garden or something. The other quick hit today comes from deep space. Well, sort of. They're taking galactic dynamics data and seeing if a Bose-Einstein condensate dark matter model can work, and it does. Well, why is this getting a nod here? Because this doesn't have to be some magic, new, mysterious dark matter particle we can't seem to find anywhere. This is plasma, normal matter, just in a different configuration. And that's our ultimate answer to dark matter. Up next, we're going to a major review that didn't quite want to put major effort into every piece of the puzzle. What drives global temperatures? Well, first, in a shameful academic move here in 2020, they use sunspots and nothing else. No particles, no flaring, and no interplanetary magnetic fields. Basically just shoved it under the rug. But nevertheless, they managed to veer in this direction anyway as the space weather and cosmic ray forcing of ocean temperatures and its circulation is well established. So also is the solar control of El Nino and La Nina strength. That's ENSO. And while not nearly as well known as the space weather ENSO connection, the AMO takes considerable modulation from the sun as well. This is chapter four of our book. So they tried to restrict the sun, ignore the particles and magnetic forcing, but they weren't able to escape the indirectly forced modulators of the global temperatures. And the solar modulators are by particles and fields. Again, that's all in Chapter 4 of Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. That's at spaceweathernews.com publications. Now, folks, I wanted to bring this up to lead into a special video I hope will come out later tonight. If not, then tomorrow. We're looking at the great 2017 solar flares and their ionospheric effects. Well, folks, that Sun and Earthquakes paper, which appears to have gone viral since we shared it a few days ago, is describing the same sort of ionospheric disruptions, but they are using the proton bombardment. Well, folks, if you'll recall, it was about the electrodynamic changes in the ionosphere, and that's really all you need to induce in the crust or take the atmospheric pathways. Of course, just two days after the largest ionospheric flare disturbance in a decade was the magnitude 8 earthquake in Mexico. Special video on all of this coming soon. And last but not least, we're not veering far away. There appears to be merit behind our overdue aspect of seismic forecasting. Loading, unloading, charging up, discharge, storing potential energy, and release. Folks, this is what we show with our electric experiments. This is the piezoelectric process mentioned in that Sun and Earthquakes paper, and the primary interface for our crust is the ionosphere. The Sun controls that through solar flares, solar winds, CMEs, solar protons and electrons, interplanetary magnetic fields, and the modulation of cosmic rays. Folks, we already are at the stage where eight of the last ten magnitude 7 earthquakes have been predicted by users at QuakeWatch.net just using the location forecasting techniques. Perhaps we're on the precipice of a revolution in timing accuracy as well, using the sun. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.